Hey guys, what's up? So, I was gonna probe some of you, uh, some of you guys, uh, jet boat folks, and the uh, at least maybe some of my subscribers. But I got a, a couple experiments here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. Um, we got the uh, starting to warm up a little bit, so we got the little Starcraft up here. Um, got a bimini top on it now I didn't get a chance to show that off yet looks kind of silly on the boat but that's a nice tarp support if anything um, and we got a couple other boats here a couple buddies boats that we're we're working on too but um, but yeah I wanted to hit you guys about this and see see what your thoughts are so a lot of the a lot of the guys running um, the, you know, like up in Canada or over in New Zealand, the jet boat guys are running uh, sand traps in their, their cooling water coming from the pump going to the engine to keep sediment out of the motor. Um, so I wasn't going to even do the, the water down here is a whole lot different than up in you know this crystal clear uh mountain rivers that they're running up in canada they're, they're pretty much strictly concerned about sediment you know it, they don't have the the weeds and the muck and the 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 shit that we have down here the you know the brown nasty foggy water that i'm running in so i was kind of torn on this to begin with but i, I do want to try and maybe experiment with with this mostly because the fuel pump module i did a, a few videos on it um it's a it's a dual pump module intended for a volvo penta stern drive engine um but it has a because there's two pumps that they, they get hot they get really hot they're so the module has a a water jacket the the low pressure pump fills up this this cylindrical well for lack of a better word um, and then the high pressure pump draws off the bottom of that well so when the well fills up there's a little float up at the top that closes off a a uh, like a purge hose a purge fitting coming off the top of it that you run up to your your intake manifold um, and so basically when it fills it the, the float closes that off so it's not obviously pumping fuel up the purge line into your intake so but right around the outside of that well there's a small uh, water jacket that has a fitting on the bottom and then a fitting on the top um, I believe it was more than likely I'm not 100% sure but it was intended for closed cooling so there's no lake water running through it there's a, there's antifreeze going through this thing because it's you know it's small fittings it's a small narrow little jacket it's it's I'm, I'm assuming not intended for debris and crappy uh, river water running through it but we're gonna do it nonetheless so that's the main reason for this i'm not super concerned about getting sediment and crap and everything in the engine it's an ls engine i mean they're at least around here they're dime a dozen you know what i mean i, I can spend 300 dollars and go get another one um and all the passages are really you're not going to restrict or plug anything off i mean you may i have heard of main cooling lines getting plugged with a, a little stone or something like that but that would happen either way so so I'm going to try this thing. I talked to one gentleman on a forum up in Canada who ran one of these. I'm not sure if it was exactly like this one, or but it was something similar. This is this is just a a sediment filter for uh, like your house. Like if you had a a flowing well and you were getting sediment in your water, you would use something like this um, right after your well pump. Hence why it's 
PVC. Two, this one's made to accept two inch. They make all different sizes. One inch, inch and a half, two inch, even bigger than that, yeah. But I was, it, the bigger they get, the taller the, the whole unit gets. The taller, bigger the filter gets. This was kind of where I was limited to in terms of, you know, height wise, to be able to have this mounted in there vertically and have room uh, above and below it. So, it has a, it comes with this, this valve that you put on the bottom. So it's called a spin down filter. The water comes in, comes in the outside of this filter and, and sort of has a, a spinning action to it. And the sediment is all supposed to wind up down here in the bottom. And then on occasion when the, the thing's getting plugged up, you, you dump it out with this valve. Um, under pressure probably you, you'd want to like power flush it um you know in, in your house i guess you wouldn't have to it wouldn't have to be under under pressure you know you could just have a bucket underneath it and just open it up and drain it out but it's going to be a little different in this application so i can't remember that this thing's rated at what the hell was it, it was like 150 psi or something so we're not gonna have an issue with that um, and in terms of flow, I mean, we're talking about two inch PVC here. I got these slip fit reducers that I'm going to glue into here that immediately step it all the way down to half inch pipe. The size fitting that the whole rest of the cooling system uses, five eighths poses and half inch pipe. So I don't think we're going to have an issue with flow either. Um, but Aside from that, I don't know, I'm up in the air about this thing. It, it's, there's going to be a lot of crap running through here. I don't, so, I, and I don't know, you know, the algae and weeds and whatever, that type of, the, this thing may like plug right up like in not much time at all and just be a pain in the ass. You're back here having to try to flush the thing. And maybe the type of material I get caught in here doesn't flush very well. Um... You know, it's just, you may end up having to, like, take the, this thing is just hand tight once it's, you know, so when it's installed, you can just unscrew this housing and pull the filter out and clean it. But obviously, you don't want to have to be doing that all the time. Ideally, you can just, on occasion, you know, oh, there's some crap in the bottom, and you just power flush it out while the engine's running. Um, so I don't know. This is a complete experiment. I got to believe that most of the trash that goes through the pump just goes out the tail end of the boat you know there i don't i i may be wrong but it seems like there shouldn't be that much crap coming up the cooling line um you know the the berkeley pumps they pick up the cooling line like just on the other side of the wear ring so it's not like directly pushing the water into the the cooling line it's Essentially, just the pressure that builds in the bowl right after the impeller forces water back up the the cooling line to the engine. So, I guess we're going to find out how much crap is actually going up that cooling line. Um, so, this is a, a hundred mesh. I'm not sure exactly what the numbers um, coincide to, but uh, the higher the number... And maybe it's micron um, the higher the number the finer the mesh and you can get these filters in, in you know with, with any number of, of different mesh uh, screens on the inside of them so I went with a lower mesh because I'm not worried about the it, it, it really seems like it's still pretty fine I, I'm concerned about that too I may have to step it down I'm just trying to keep crap little small you know sediment and stuff like that that could plug up that little fuel pump module uh jacket so but at the same time you want to let some of the stuff get through here so you're not just cleaning this damn thing out every other you know two three times every time you take it up and down the river so we're, we're gonna yeah we're you know i'm gonna rig this all up and we're gonna see what the hell happens with it um so this is the other experiment so the other boat my blue boat uh the old cobra jet 
long time ago, um, I got spooked into getting a pressure relief valve kit for the engine. Um, and I should have put a pressure gauge on the engine first before I, I bought this kit. Um, because I, I don't think it's really an issue in that engine. It may be because it was a big 455 olds. The, I mean, the coolant passages, there's passages are just bigger in the engine and it just really doesn't build pressure. Um, it, it, a noticeable amount of pressure anyway. I mean, we've driven it without the engine cover on and watched the gauge and even, you know, punching it from a, from a stop, which should be the biggest spike in pressure in coming up that cooling line. And we really weren't getting anything noticeable. I mean, a few pounds top. So I don't think that whole kit that I put in that thing is even really doing anything. Um, but the Starcraft, the first time... I don't know if I think I mentioned it in the video when I was testing it up up north at the lake that the water pressure was very high. It's it's four or five pounds just sitting there idling, and when you start cruising around, not even really hammering on it, it was 20 25 psi. Um, reading the the pressure gauge is mounted just before the engine so it's kind of reading what the you know the engine itself is subjected to in terms of pressure so i had to do something about that we can't have it running at 25 psi you know we're gonna it's an ls engine they're pretty tough little buggers but 25 psi is a little high for for my liking i don't want to pop head gaskets or or whatever else um you know, putting putting more stress on the entire system than it really needs to have on it. You know, all the hoses, the connections, everything. So, I was going to buy another one of the same kits that I got for the uh, for the old boat, but they're you know I'm a cheap bastard. Um, you know, I'm pretty well established on that, but it's like a hundred and fifteen dollars, a hundred and twenty dollars, or something like that, and it's. It really doesn't. It comes with a, a a pressure relief valve that looks pretty similar to this, and it comes with a bunch of other fittings to kind of do the whole thing. It comes with a gate valve that you put ahead of the ahead of this to to regulate the water flow coming into the engine, so you can change raise or lower the the engine's temperature to an extent. It doesn't work all that well, but you can maybe get a little bit more temperature into the motor with using the gate valve. And it comes with, you know, a T and a barb and all this other crap. But the main thing I was concerned about is the valve. I can get all that other stuff. I don't need to buy that in an overpriced kit. So I found the company that I bought the kit from and went directly to their website. And they sell the valve that they use. You can get the just the valve individually. It looks similar to this, but it has a, a little cap on the top of it that is like a little thumb cap you just unscrew it and then down inside there there's a a flat it accepts a flat blade screwdriver and the valve is adjustable from 7 to 25 psi so if you get up it, and, and they want 68 dollars or something for this stupid little valve but you go anywhere else on the internet um, and look for their valve that they're using a valve that looks like that one that that has is adjustable from you know 7 to 25 psi it doesn't exist it's not out there every one of these valves that are adjustable are 175 psi to 250 psi they're very high pressure so I could not find one that was adjustable for lower pressures like that so I think maybe what that company is doing is buying valves disassembling them and putting their own spring or something inside it and, and lowering its its pressure you know the range that it its range of adjustment so before I do that I wanted to try one of these this is just a boiler relief valve um, this is not adjustable it's preset at uh, 15 psi which is perfect cooling system pressure. 15 PSI, that's great. So the, the guts and everything on this thing look 
identical to that adjustable valve that I have in the other boat. This one is just non-adjustable. So I bounced around on forums and stuff and talked to a bunch of people about trying to attempt this. And it, it's, you know, I, like with everything else that I've done with this boat, it's, no, that's not going to work. No, 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 you can't do that. That's, no, it's not wrong kind of valve. It's not going to function properly. It's just going to open, and then it's not going to close again. It's not the, you know, the correct, I'm just getting a whole bunch of, of, of you know, naysayers. Um, and I, I just, I, I can't wrap my head around why this wouldn't work. Like, it's 15 PSI. I, may, yes, maybe the valve will open when it reaches its, its pressure, and then it, it, there's too much flow, and it can't close again, so then now you're bypassing all your cooling water out the, the transom of the boat, and the engine's overheating because it's not, or is with the fact that you're just cruising around, and the thing was running at 25 PSI, like, is this thing just going to be popping off the like, entire time? Is it just going to sit there and maintain the water pressure coming into the engine just at 15 PSI? Or is it just going to, as soon as it opens, it's just going to dump all the pressure out of the system and not be able to close until you shut the engine back off? I don't know what it's going to do. But everybody who told me that this wasn't going to work Nobody has attempted to do this, so, hell, most of these guys don't even run a pressure relief valve, they just, you know, they just, they just run them without it. Um, so, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to plumb this in too, I think I'm going to plumb it in in front of this, you know, to maybe get some debris in there and make it caught in that valve, but I want to try it in front of this thing first, if I can, get away with it. Because if this thing suddenly, you know, you go, you plow through a bunch of uh, uh, muck or something like that, and this thing, like, rapidly just packs itself right full, this thing will relieve the pressure before this, this polycarbonate explodes in the back of the boat. So, this is all theory. Again, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to put both of these things on, and I'm going to see what happens. But just give me your thoughts guys on what you think I mean if I'm just wasting my time like between them both of these this is just not a huge investment so it's not really a big deal you know I may end up having to buy a $400 jet boat sand trap and have to get the you know $70 adjustable valve or I, I may end up this may be a complete waste of my time but I don't know I like trying out stuff like this if there's a cheaper more economical way of doing the same thing then you know why not this entire boat project has been about experiments you know so but yeah i know kind of a boring video but let me know what you guys think i don't I, you know I'm, I'm trying to get like honest opinions not just these these die hard you know these guys on these forums well i've been doing this for 40 years and i i, I get it you know like, but you've, if you've never attempted this, then your your opinion is kind of irrelevant. I don't know, you know. I, it, I, but here I am asking you guys about this, and I guarantee nobody watching this video has ever attempted this either. But, but again, I, it, it's how are we gonna find out if I don't try it? So, yeah, let me know what you guys think, and we're gonna put them on there regardless. But. And, and see how it works, but I'd like to get some of your guys' opinions on it, so um, you got the uh, the blazer is in here uh, getting painted, we made a kind of a makeshift uh, paint booth in here, he just shot the roof um, yesterday uh, just to give us an idea, kind of do a test, test panel with the, the paint and the clear, and then we're going to tape the roof off and paint and clear the rest of it so once i can get this stupid blazer out of here it keeps getting shoved outside you know it gets sidetracked working on other stuff and then it comes back in work on a little bit and then it gets shoved back outside so we're we're finishing it this time because we got all these damn boats to get going i gotta get the starcraft's got need some some tlc and uh, the old blue boats got to get de-winterized too so 
yeah um but yeah thanks for watching guys let me uh let me know what you think about this this uh stupid idea but uh yeah and we'll catch you on the next one or right, we're gonna be working on the starcraft we'll be doing a whole bunch of stuff to the thing here real shortly i ordered a ton of parts for it and i got a new uh new trailer that's over getting sandblasted right now is going to come back we're going to get it all painted up it's a really nice bunk trailer to replace the piece of shit trailer that it's sitting on so that'll be first order business and then we'll bring the starcraft in and it's going to be a whole bunch of electronics and stuff that we're putting in the thing it's going to be really cool so stay tuned for that but yeah thanks for watching guys we'll catch you on the next one